as a guy, we always felt like we couldn't express. That's why I took that right female to make us express our feelings towards her. You see what I'm saying? But as a guy, we always felt like ain't nobody going to really help us with these type of feelings but ourselves. So just give me my long time. Let me think. Because that's just what we was brought to as a young age, as being a guy. When you have feelings, nobody really cared for them. They're like, man, if you don't go sit down, you a dude. Like, mm-hmm. And then you had to go by yourself, sit down and, and try to recuperate of why you feeling like that. Yeah. So I feel like that's when we got older, that's how we we still kind of portray that same thing. We just need that female to bring that side out of us without being no simp. What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day, with an I do not ask why. And today, we are joined by recording artist YBHJ. R, what it do, did, bro? You did. How you doing, family? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm living good. I'm living good. It's not too bad out here. We got a little heat inside the city, so I'm feeling good today. Yeah. Are you a fan of that? Are you a fan of like hot summers? I'm really on. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I feel like when it get too hot, you mm-hmm. want it cold. But yeah. then when it get too cold, you, you want, want it hot. hot. So since we've been through the little cold spree, I, I like the hot song. Yeah, I don't mind the hot, but don't expect for me to step out till about seven, <laughs> eight o'clock. Like I, I get, <laughs> nah, for sure. yeah, I get hot easily. So I do my workouts <laughs> in the morning. I'm in the house hibernating. When the sun start to go down, then that's then when you I outside. step out. That's yeah. the best time to be outside too. That's when the weather start cooling down a little bit. You get that like happy medium right there. So exactly, that's the best time. Right that's there. the summer vibes. Your favorite summer vibe song? My favorite summer vibe song. Yeah. And you can't use Summertime by Will Smith. That's a cheap one. Ah, point. okay. Let's see. Let's see. Summertime vibe song. Mm-hmm. Summertime vibe song. I'm not going to lie. Let me see. Let me see. That's tough. I that's, know I, I, know that's I put really you in a tough. predicament. That's really tough. You got me sitting here thinking like, damn, what's a good Summertime song? We'll come back to it. But while you're thinking of that, yeah. uh, real quick, in your name, YBH, what does that stand for? Um, So it stands for, we originally made it for, it to stand for Young Black Hustlers because it's just a group of us, mainly my brothers and um, my friends who basically my brothers so I knew them for mm-hmm. years. Yeah. And we was all young. And we felt like we was blessed because the things that we had, other kids didn't have. Like, we come up, we grew up with parents in our house. We had food on our table, clothes on our back, and was able to play sports. So we was like, we blessed. And then we always hustled because we always wanted more. We mm-hmm. always wanted more than what we had. We was always like, whatever predicament we was in, we always pictured that, all right, we can be better than this or do better. So we always used to hustle to that. The other thing was also, you be him or you be her. So we was basically telling people, like, be yourself. You ain't got to act like this or act like that so i'm myself you her, you yourself she herself so that's why we came over with ybh so it's you be him you be her or young bless hustlers and all that's everybody and all together i like that emphasizing the blessed part yeah but even still not stopping there just because you blessed take it to another level take use that bless as a stepping stone and then you be him you be her being your exactly. own so it's a double entourage i hope that's exactly. the right terminology nah. i want to feel smart for a second i think it's called a double <laughs> entourage that's like uh with Nip's brand, uh, A uh, or TMC, the Marathon Continues yeah. and the Marathon Clothing. He yeah. used it for both. I like that. Yeah, I like you that. right on point right there. I yeah, man. You right on point thank with you, that. Thank you. I try to be. <laughs> I try to be. So that's um, that's like the brand. That's the brand. That's, that's what's the up. brand we're so, we backing up by. So you're pushing it. I like that. For do you sure. have any like type of like merch or anything with it? With yeah, we, we do have merch. We have a lot of merch. But then this way it get a little crazy. I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie. So we branch out from Robbie H. Also to... Mainly our brand is called Low Gravity, so that's loyalty over wealth. Mm-hmm. But that's branched it off of y, um, YBH. YBH is most, mostly the music side and, like, the artistic side. But then Low Gravity is mainly, like, like the clothing side of everything. So that's a whole nother predicament, a whole nother time. That's on, cool. On so that Low Gravity right is the foundation of everything. Yeah, and for then sure. YBH is just a branch of that. Uh, no, no, it's really YBH <clears throat> is the foundation of everything. And okay, low, and low Gravity, gravity. is the branch off of that. But okay. Low Gravity took it more on the clothing side of everything. YBH mm-hmm. is more on the music side, mm-hmm. the music side of stuff. And the more of you being yourself. So... You don't have to particularly do music, mm-hmm. but whatever you do, you being yourself while doing that. So that's the why we ate side of it. Always. Real quick with merch, because mm-hmm. I want to give tips to just people out there with brands. And this will be for me for myself, because yeah. I, I dabbled in the merch area for a second and yeah. then it go completely as planned. People think it's just as easy as you, you oh, print nah. some stuff on some shirts, you got merch, it's going to do numbers. And put you, it out there. Yeah, yeah. you're going to be the next <laughs> Nike or Under Armour, nah. but it is far from that. So you know, just real quick, what are some like uh, tips you could give as far as to 
having um a successful merch, merch plan. business. Yeah. I feel like marketing, 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 marketing. That's the number one thing. Have you I feel like it's your brand and your marketing. So once you brand it, so branding is basically being yourself. I feel like so many people will copy what somebody else have and then put out a repeat. Like nobody mm-hmm. really feeling that too too much stuff. So have you make it your own and then you put it out there, but marketing is the key. If you know how to market, you can get anything out that you want to get out. You can yeah. sell anything. So I feel like marketing going to be your best your best bet. That should be the number brand. one emphasis, marketing. Most definitely. Okay. I've, Most I've definitely. heard that a few times. So that, that definitely makes sense. That's going to push it. And another question. You said just now that everyone tries to mimic something yeah. else in a way. Now, something I've heard is that, especially when it comes to brands, uh-huh. clothing, whatever may have you, is that... Everything is a mimic. Not nah, for sure. In a sense. Yeah. Right? It just may be to a very micro scale. Yeah, but for sure. Damn, everything is mimic. Do you mm. think that's true or not? No, nah, I think that's real true. <clears throat> but, like, I, I know this old saying, this said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. also, don't take the same thing. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Like, you can understand if Nike made that type of shoe, like, I like that type of shoe. Mm-hmm. But when you put it inside yours, you got to still add your little yeah. creativity. Like, if, you, if everybody make... I'm gonna say mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. Everybody made mac and cheese the same way. You not you not gonna really want it no more. But what makes you go to these different brands is because they take that shoe or they take that source of food and they add their own little taste to it. So I feel like when you get some that you want, you can mimic some because that's probably what inspired you to make it that first time mm-hmm. seeing somebody else do it. Yeah. But then I always feel like you gotta take what's closer to you or make you feel good and add that mixture inside. And that's just what makes it. Yeah. Yours. So taking. So yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Just taking, maybe get inspired yeah. by different things. Maybe yeah. take slight, not even parts, but slight uh, ideas yeah. or slight, trying to think of the word, slight, just, I don't know, just elements. Yeah, that's slight the elements. Yeah. But putting it together, to, and you can do that from different things, but then putting that together to form like Voltron for your own exactly. thing. Exactly. Okay, so bait to Nike. Mm-hmm. Was that inspiration or was that a copy? That was inspiration. Bait with forces? Yeah. I so think them taking off the check and putting on put the Putting that thing, I'd say that was inspiration because everybody, you seen Nike, but when Nike was dropping at first, they was dropping like basic colors, mm-hmm. but when Bape dropped their side, they was start putting all them exotic colors yeah. inside there, all them checkerboard type stuff. So mm-hmm. I feel like they got inspired by what Nike. Well, most shoes got inspired by what Nike yeah. was doing, yeah. and then they just threw their own colors. So I, I would say that was expired right there. That wasn't copy. Okay, I thought I thought you was bluffing at first when I'm like, nah, them niggas copy. But you <laughs> you did make a good point by saying. By them doing the different colors, exactly. Because yeah, Nike wasn't on. Nike it. It wasn't was black, doing that at that white, time. You maybe feel me? some different colors, like the but, basic ones. Yeah. Did you have half a pair of Bapes? I <laughs> did not. I'm not gonna lie. When I when I was younger, um, I used to listen to Soldier Boy, and Soldier Boy used to always um do the bathing aid thing. But I, I just never, I never liked it though. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I yeah. was, oh man, I felt it was too country at that time for me. Yeah, it was. Damn, it was that's like, a throwback. Dang. It was like, hey, hey, Rab, I just came up for the stove, man. What you, what got? you got? I, I got, got me some bathing today. Day. Damn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's nostalgia for your ass right there. I did not I did not like it. Me personally. I was I felt like it was too much. I low key like to keep stuff simple. Mm-hmm. It was too much at that time. I was like, damn, I, what I, I had a pair. That? I ain't gonna lie, I had the cotton candy what, joints. What color what color pink, was those? Pink and like pink light and blue. blue. I don't think I ever wore them because I damn sure they didn't have nothing to match with like, it. Like, what back you gonna then. wear with that? Yeah, yeah. I just had them to have them. You know what I'm saying? And then plus, uh, like Pharrell made them a little cool at some yeah. point. Like he used to wear babes and whatnot. But Pharrell was ahead of his time nah, as far sure. as being a future icon. For sure. Um, let's talk about the music. Let's do it. First, let me ask you, what type of music do I make? Do you make? I was saying my music I make is um, I won't sort of say toxic. But it's somewhat inside a little category because basically the music I make is more for, I'm not going to say, it's more for the female side. I don't make too much street stuff type of music like that. I make more stuff for the females and stuff. But I was kind of going off of my past relationships or the relationships I've been in. So the type of music I make now is I throw some of that little toxic stuff inside because that's just what I went through around that time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the music is more melodic, low tone. Toxic, so to say. 
Listen, Music for the females. I like it. A little bit of toxic is good. <laughs> I've always said it. Just a, just a, just the right amount. I don't like it. <laughs> That's what it is. Just well, the right amount. Well, not is good. not so to say my music. So to say the toxin is. I don't like it now. Well, well, I think what you're saying is is toxic because it comes from a toxic place that you yeah. was once. Most and once sure. a part of, for sure. whether you was delivering a toxicity <laughs> or you was receiving it, you was in some type nah, of toxic sure. environment sure. and you just use that to inspire your music. Exactly. It's not like you're being deliberate. It's not like you're, you're future out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, nah, for sure. I ain't well, are you? I don't know. I don't know. You know I don't know what you're playing, but I ain't going that. I ain't going that far with it. But yeah, you hit it right on the key with that. It's right. a little toxic in there. But I like that that inspired your music. So here's a question I have for you. My last episode last week with Jazz 0704, shout out to Jazz. Mm-hmm. She said that night uh that RB today compared to let's say like the 90s is yeah. day and night. Yeah. And we was actually speaking on this a little bit earlier. Um, do you think it's the same? Cause she said, you know, like back then dudes were like singing in the rain, nah, dudes were sure. they felt more like for it was sure. more soulful. Like sure. do you agree with that? And yeah, hundred percent yeah. I agree with that. Back back then, man, it was just different. It was just different. Like I feel like the relationships were better back then. Every like you said, the guys were actually willing to sing in the rain. I mean, they had a full blown groups of guys just singing for a female. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it was different nowadays. Man, you got girls you want to be city girls and all that. It's like dang. But then, but then, what's crazy to me is that the females nowadays want the treatment of the females back then, mm-hmm. but they don't act the same. But don't give off. The they don't same act the energy. same. So. But then it's the fellas too, the way our music has changed too. Everybody just talking about blase, blase, mess with a whole bunch of these these different females. So mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like music need to get back to that stage. Cause that's gonna bring more do intimacy you, and stuff inside our relationships. Do you think it can? Cause we're at the opposite end of the mm, spectrum compared sure. to the shit that we were talking about. Cause like you said, uh, it's 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 ugly out here. It's yo. ugly like out here. Like the shit that's talked about in music and just the shit that's oh, displayed man. from from vast majority. It's yeah. not everybody. From vast majority, but that majority clouds it for the people that aren't living not like that. Sure. So those people don't even get thought of or looked mm-hmm. at or whatnot. So do you think um do you think we can get back to that? I think we could. I think we could. It's just gonna take the right people. Cause right now, I feel like whoever is the top dog that's pushing the music don't want us to get like that. So the only type of music that they're pushing right now is the shoot 'em up, bang bang, tough stuff. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you still got your select a few people that's still making that type of love music. We just don't get seen by them as much because whoever's pushing that type of music, they're not trying to hear that right now. So they leaving that in the back. That's why you see everybody that's doing the shoot 'em up, bang bang stuff. That's what's getting pushed right now. That's what's getting all the views right now. So I feel like we can get back there. It just whoever at that top spectrum got to push that type of music more. Are you talking about artists when you say who's at the top? Nah, I'm talking about uh, the labels. And, yeah, I was ready to say the, the people the, that's putting it out, right? Yeah, the people that's putting it out. <clears throat> but but like, damn, will, will they ever? Because they know they see how much we attract to the negative or yeah. to the bullshit or to the the city. Like they see how much that we attract to it. Mm-hmm. It's like. Why would they go back? They lose money. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Because exactly. it's such a small crowd that really want to hear what exactly. the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? They pushing out the bullshit. So. Exactly. I feel like it's gonna take the right artists probably to to put themselves up like that. Because like you said, if they if they losing money, they're not gonna even push that no more. They are gonna right. push the stuff that's making money. So yeah. if you if you got the right artists that know how to portray that message to the right people, mm-hmm. I feel like it can get pushed that way. So like an independent artist, because of course they won't be able to do it exactly. underneath a record label, because exactly. that's not what the label's going to push out. It's ugly out here for relationships, for everything. It just, oh man, I don't know I don't know how the relationship's going to go in this generation, but it's looking bad. It's well, looking ugly. Well, let's talk about it, since we're speaking of relationships. Do you mm-hmm. have a situation? No, nah, I'm actually single right now. All right, is that is that by choice or by force? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say both of them. Right. It was it was by choice because it was my choice because I ain't wanted to. Um... So you recently got out of something? Yeah, okay. it was a long relationship. So I'm not gonna lie, it was a long time. How long? We talking about like six, seven years. Mm. So it was a long time, but I just be feeling like you you can either grow apart from somebody or you can grow closer to somebody. So I felt like at my spectrum, I was living my life in, it's like, if you're not here to try to motivate me, inspire me, love me, and correct me where I'm wrong, I don't need you around me because at this point, you're starting to be a distraction. If everything is just yelling, if we can't talk like grown-ups and get through it, I don't even want you around me at this point because everything beyond that is just going to start up 
arguments and start up this and that and the third. And it's like, dang, when I was younger, yeah, let's do it. But mm-hmm. as you get older, you didn't want peace. You didn't want mm-hmm. peace between your relationships and everything else. So I had to get myself up out of that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's, it, it don't matter how long you with somebody. If it's no, for sure. literally like negative every day. Yeah. Why be there? You can't do it. But people much. hold on. You said six, seven years. Yeah. That's the number one thing people hold on to that time. don't want to let go of. That time. Maybe I'm not going to even sit here and lie. That time be holding you back. Mm-hmm. It held me back a couple of times. Sometimes I try to run far as I can. You get snatched on back. I'm like, damn. Then I got to look at myself like, damn, how you just get picked back in the same predicament you were just in? No, let's be real, JR. Let's be real. Oh, man. <laughs> it's easier said. I know oh, I'm selling here talking about some. I don't care how many years it is. If it's negative, leave. That's easier said than done. Nah, for sure. Because sometimes when you hook, you hook. You hook. When you win there, you win there. Oh listen, man, hook for listen, sure. I done been there. H. I done been there. Goddamn <laughs> windshield crack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tired slash everything. Fuck like. you, bitch. Don't ever talk to me again. <laughs> Two weeks later, I'm in there. You, you know what I'm saying? Me. Man, they had said done. family issues. All that, man, like fights, scratch, cuts, breaks, everything. And it's just like two weeks later, you start to think it back like, dang, was it really that serious when it happened? Next thing you know, you forgiving them because you think they didn't change. Yeah, man. Be so, the same thing down the path. Like, Listen, we're human. That shit is easier said than done. I way know, easier. I know, I know I'm preaching, but still. Maybe sitting at nighttime, bored in hell, and then go check on it person, yeah, see what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be yeah. in there lost, man, not knowing what to do. Oh, man. Not knowing what to do. Well, um... You're back on the... How long ago did y'all break up? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, like, we, I say like two months ago. Two months ago? Yeah, so it wasn't even that long, really. Is it over for sure? Like, is this really... I will say that to myself. Most definitely. I will right. say that to myself. Well, after two months, do you feel good and confident that it's really over? Um, Sort of say for me, I would think so. But for them, I don't think so. You know, it's people still be stalking your page and stuff like that. So you still be knowing. So you're saying you believe you're single, but you don't think she fully believes it? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. And and I'll say it just it be feeling weird throughout that time that you get yourself. It feel weird just cause usually if you usually have somebody you texting every day mm-hmm. or if y'all grown up, y'all sleeping with each other every mm-hmm. day, meaning and then to have that just completely cut off in mm-hmm. one day, I'm not gonna lie, it do it it it's a do shock. yeah, it's a shock to your body. It's like your brain gotta catch up with your heart at that point. And then once you fighting your heart with your brain, bro, it's like you can't even explain that battle to nobody gonna understand because yeah. it's like your brain fighting your heart. Everybody gonna have their little pieces like, all right, mm-hmm. I think you should do this, but you can't fight that. And then it just feel weird at that time. So yeah. I guess once you start coming to that understanding of I right, being alone and just loving your space right there, then you, I guess you can bounce back from that. Yeah, but you've been feeling good about it so far? Yeah, for surely. For surely. Yeah. Being comfortable with yourself is the most important thing you nah, can do. I think but behind um, the time factor, yeah. like we said, that being number one, I think number two is the fact that people are afraid to be by themselves nah, for sure. and be, you know, alone. Like for literally sure. they get like anxiety by themselves. Yeah. I'm the opposite. I fucking love being by myself. Me too. Like I can be myself by myself but, for fucking days, weeks, however many. Like I was the type of kid when I was younger, like I'd be mm-hmm. at the store with my folks, I'd wander off. Yeah, by just yourself. Randomly. I don't <laughs> like every time we went to the store, like mm-hmm. I would get lost. Like I don't know what the fuck I, I was about. I think I think that was me too. I think that low key messed the relationship up too, because some days they will feel like in a relationship you gotta be around that person twenty four seven, seven days a week. Sometimes I just I need my little alone time. Like sometimes let me rejuvenate get myself back up together, then I can come back. But in a relationship, they'll feel like you it's, don't, it's you, a you job. Didn't, you didn't feel point. like you could have that alone time to get yourself together when you was with her? Nah. Did she ever like uh, express that she needed that alone time as well, or was it just you? Nah, she she expressed herself that she didn't want that alone time. She wanted like I had yeah. to be it's, on ball port. It's very rare. It's very rare. Yeah. Um, from from my personal experience, yeah. it's very rare for women to want that like alone. Let me step off time. It's usually men. Oh, yeah, it's men. They're the opposite. They're if you're going through something, you feel some type of way. Tell me, let me know, exactly. express it to me, Megan. And, and we have we have a, for those, so we have a, a, a lady um, in the live audience. Is <laughs> is that usually? Have you ever felt like you wanted that alone space, or do you want to be brought together to express what you're going through instead of going alone? I think um, I think it's the guy. That yeah, it's usually the guy, like right? No, from the female's perspective, the reason that girls are like. Let's talk about it, this, that, and the third. Like, for the relationships that I've been in, it's mm-hmm. the guy that's like, I'm not about to have you out here, like, 
sad and I don't know what's going on. So yeah. it's come, let's talk about it. But then guys are polar opposite. And they're like, I need to go handle my stuff by myself over here in a corner. Yeah. But like, they don't really allow the female to do that when they're like, when you're talking about situations when they're going through. I feel like, I feel like to, to all what you're saying, I feel like it's, as a guy, we grow up different. We grow up to like, you got to hide your feelings. And like, if you crying at a young age, your pops going to tell you right there, like, but you better suck that stuff up. You mm -hmm. better go somewhere or you're going to get beat more before you crying. Mm -hmm. So as a guy, we always felt like, we couldn't express. That's why I take that right female to make us express our feelings towards her. You see what I'm saying? But as a guy, we always felt like ain't nobody going to really help us with these type of feelings but ourselves. So just give me my alone time. Let me think. Because that's just what we was brought to as a young age, as being a guy. When you have feelings, nobody really cared for them. They're like, man, if you don't go sit down, you a dude. Like, mm -hmm. And then you had to go by yourself, sit down, and, and try to recuperate of why you feeling like that. Yeah. So I feel like that's when we got older, that's how we... We still kind of portray that same thing. We just need that female to bring that side out of us without being no simp. Yeah. So to say it towards her, mm -hmm. without her thinking you were simp or something like that. Yeah. So. Did you have that? What? What you was just speaking on? That a long time? No, no. That 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 right woman to bring that out of you. Um, uh, I don't feel like yet. I don't feel like yet. Right. It's it be me too. I'm not gonna even. I'm not gonna sit here and act gotcha. like I'm no angel or so because I would. I'm still learning too. Yeah. So me personally, I would try to do it, but then. I feel like when I do it, they'll use it against me. Mm -hmm. And when you use something against me, but I'm not going to never open up no more like I just did. Because if I open up something and then later down the road, we end up getting into an argument and you just use what, like, took me the strength to try to open up and tell you, use it against me. You ain't never finna hear none of that no more ever, mm -hmm. ever again. Builds that uh, permanent block up. Yeah, it kind of a uh, permanent block. And I'm not going to lie, for me, sometimes it takes a little long time for it to knock it down. So I would say it would be me sometimes too. But yeah, so I just like my long time sometimes. Like, let me get away, get my mind together, get back to my regular self, and then boom, we can, let's talk about it. So right now, what do you want? What does JR want right now? Do you want to stay established and build in that alone environment or do you want something a from someone? Yeah, nah, know. I would say I, <clears throat> at this point, I want, I need a wife. I want a wife. Wife? Want, like, like le, you're saying girlfriend or you're saying legit? I want a legit wife. Okay. I don't want no girlfriend. I don't, I don't want to play no games no more. I play my games through grade school and stuff. I don't be want to play no games no more. So don't but play me, play your Xbox. You see what I'm saying? So, so wanting like a wife, how old are you? 25. 25. It, it's crazy. I'm only saying this because this is the today time that we're living in. <laughs> Being 25 and saying I want a wife is a bit yeah. unorthodox yeah, today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but you want one. Why so? I, because you just, I feel like the way we was created as men, we can try to do everything ourselves, but something's going to still be missing. Something's always going to be missing. And that missing piece is really your significant other. Like, your wife is going to be that person that make you grind because I feel like women don't kind of understand the thoughts that we be having as in our head as men. Like, it's not only just about a relationship. We try to build an empire. And building this empire, we, like, need you by our side to make this thing get built. So me saying a wife, I'm just basically saying somebody that's going to be there through when I'm struggling mentally. Because we all struggle mentally. So you're going to need somebody to uplift you inside that part that you're falling down on and just make you feel more secure and make you feel like whatever you're doing, you're doing it for a purpose. So mm -hmm. that's wife material, not mm -hmm. somebody that's going, you messed up mentally and they want to leave because they like, oh, you acting like this. You Instead of mm -hmm. stepping back and seeing like, why is he acting like that? And let me see why I can comfort him in that way. Because that's what women here for. They for the comfort. They for to comfort you. Ain't nothing. And I mean, ain't nothing like a woman's touch. Yeah. Just like you said, a man can, you know, do everything by himself, but it's always still that missing exactly. piece that, that a woman can can fill the void with. Um, all right, so why not just get that from a girlfriend instead of an actual wife? Um I what, feel like what a part the what about the marriage aspect is it that uh you seek? Um well for, first I'm a I'm a um, godly person, so I believe in a higher power. You see what I'm saying? So, first of all, if you want to do anything nasty with a female, you're going to have to be married, first of all. So, that that is one step. Wait, wait, wait. So, you're saying abstinence until uh, abstinence until marriage? Yeah, for sure. Wait, is that where you're at right now? Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So, you're a virgin? <laughs> <laughs> have you been married before? <laughs> Hey, I said that's where I'm at right now. Okay, that, that's not okay, where I've okay, been okay, at. You yeah, see okay. what I'm saying? 
that's where I'm at right at this point in my life. That's not why. So I'm born at. again. Born again. Okay. Better yet to say it. You see what I'm saying? So um, how long have you been abstinent? How long I said I broke with my girl before? Two months. <laughs> God damn. I'm going to change, man. Let's do it. Two months. I didn't changed up in two months already. Why? For like two years. Hey. <laughs> Who am I to judge? You know what I'm saying? Who am hey, I to judge? Hey, so, yeah. Okay, so you, from here on out, mm -hmm. at least, no, not even from here on out. Because as of the time of this recording, it's May. So as of March, yeah, you made a devotion to save yourself. Until marriage. Until marriage. For sure. Like, That's deep. I got to. And it's, and you know what's crazy? Because in the generation we live in now, it's hard to do something like that. Because that's what everybody expects. And then nowadays, these girls, if you would tell them something like that, man, they'll try to think you cheating on them. Oh, you ain't trying to do this with me, so you got to be doing it with somebody else. And it's not necessarily. It's just like, you, sure, you got to see the bigger picture. You seeing. So you you've, you've come across women that you that was interested in you, yeah. whether it be relationship or sexual-wise, yeah. and you told them. Yeah. That you're abstinent, you're chilling on that. Yeah. And how was their reaction, you said? And they wasn't feeling it. Okay. They wasn't, I'm not going to lie, I don't know why a lot of girls be thinking I'm a hoe. I don't know why. why? I, if I was sitting there and, talk, and you tell them. Is? I why, mean, you, you're a smooth guy. Why? why I don't I do not know. Sometimes I would try to keep it a whole hundred with you, like blase, blase. But then they would just be thinking I'm out here doing, I think that's why I broke on my last girl. That'll do it was, too. Keeping a hundred. Keeping a hundred will do it too. And so it's bad. Dude, dudes be thinking they got to run game. <laughs> Listen, they say they say if you if you got a if you got a pimp by by lie if you got a pimp by force or by lie then yeah, you ain't really you pimping. Ain't running game for you sure. You know what I'm saying? Like keep keeping it hundred. You can never keep, go wrong. You can't never you go wrong. And then you just being yourself. So I I definitely like being myself. I'm not trying to fake the flunk to you. Then and now the whole time we dating, I gotta try to make this type of persona just for you to accept me. Like that's too much work for me. I'm gonna just show you who I am now. If you mess with me, you mess with me. If you mm -hmm. not. You're not from me. You see what I'm saying? You got to go this way. I'm going to go this way respectfully. I don't care how bad you is. If you're not from me, you're not from me. Gotcha. Let's go our separate ways. All right. And you say they be they be tripping. They be calling you a hoe or whatnot. Yeah. Like I said, dude, you're, sm you're a smooth guy for one. Man. You're in here in Charlotte, but you're originally from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, right? For sure. Listen, they feel that presence. You know you know, Southern <laughs> girls like Northern nah, dudes. For sure. You know what I'm saying? That just, sure. that just comes with it. Um, all right, real quick, back to the abstinence thing. Uh -huh. This is interesting. <laughs> and I say it's interesting because you did say it is unorthodox for today. Like, yeah. you rarely hear that. I recently just concluded a celibacy journey. Okay. Abstinence journey. I don't know the difference between the two. I think, Same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just concluded a four and a half month celibacy journey. Okay. And same thing when I was doing it. I remember when I first started it. Literally, yeah. when I was when I first started it, it was a girl that was like, we was fucking like on a regular. Okay. And like I told her, and she like thought I was bluffing. Nah, for sure. You know what I mean? And then I've also come across like a girl that thought I was bluffing, and like that intrigued her more. I'm like, yeah. yo, I'm not saying this to like trick you. Like yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like this really is so, true. So, but so how how was that experience for you? Oh man, it was on point. I wish I could go back. To be honest for with real? you, it's too late though. <laughs> Cause I already broke it. It's summertime, like oh, you done broke it before the summertime. Spring. Well, I broke it. It's technically spring, so I broke it in spring. But I, yeah, it's, I it think says, I think it's um, too late. City boys at one point now. Nah. But, <laughs> but I'm not even. I'm not even like pressed. But here's the thing. I'm not pressed. Okay. Like I don't like fuck like a whole lot. Not like, for sure. Like back in the, like I'm chilling now. Oh, no. It did help me with like not being pressed about it. Yeah. I'm chilling. If it if it happens, happens it happens. It happens. Okay. I don't go out of my way. Nah, I'll say sure. that happens. For like sure. I don't go out of my way. If it falls on my lap, cool. But I'm not, I don't go out of my way. I don't spend to extra money. Get, exactly. I don't leave something productive that I'm doing to get it. It did help me with it just helped me with you know some nah, clarity because sure. I, I just had to do it. Cause I was <laughs> I was going down a, a, a rabbit hole at the point because it was just a whole bunch of shit going on. Nah, for sure. Like around fucking that I was like, all right, I need to take a step back. Nah, for sure. And it was chill. Um, do you masturbate? Nah, I don't. So nothing. No nothing. phlegm. Man, man, I haven't watched. No, can I say porn on here? I yeah, mean, this I is this an open platform. You could do, yeah. Man, I didn't watch none of that type of stuff since I've been a jit. Like, I don't. Well, I, you I, was in a relationship for six years. Yeah, you don't need to watch porn. Man, and yeah. and sometimes I even I even see it was low-key a long distance relationship too. But I I cannot masturbate. Like, I don't know so why. So this was before the celibacy. Yeah, this was way before. I just I just can't do it. I just can't like. Do you feel like your elders are watching you during? Is that why a lot of people say? Um, no, nah, I don't feel like my elders watching me. It just got lame to me, like mm. watching myself. Mm. Like, 
I think it'd be the more the cleanup process after. When you try to clean something and you just sit back, because like, I feel like you come right back to your senses once you get off with you, once you get your rocks off, then the you come back to you your nut, senses. You're like, I'm a fucking pig. And you just sitting back looking at yourself like, yeah. I'm a what now? What the, like pig. so? Yeah, I ain't, I ain't did that stuff in, in I mean years. Like since I've been a jit, but I just felt nasty doing it. Cause then once you cleaning up and all that, yeah, after, the cleanup is like, nasty, and then like it's the towel gets stale. You feel me? And Hands then, all messed up, and you just looking at yourself yeah. like, yeah. You and if you're serious? a real, if you're a real wild boy, when I like, I ain't gonna lie. I, I use when I was a kid, I used a sock. So if you a real, sock, yeah, if you, you made real, the pocket the PP, yeah. that's what it's called. Well, no, I didn't fuck the sock. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I wasn't living. I wasn't making a fifi. I think that's yeah. what was, uh, fifi. Now I wasn't making a fifi. Like I just used the busting socks. Okay, like, I was a wild young. That boy. was the. Oh yeah, you was wilding for yeah, sure. Like. I, when I when I found uh, when I found X and XX when I was like eleven, it was a rat. Yeah. Now I feel like every boy experienced that time. You got to. Yeah. You got to. So every boy had to. You have to go through that that little experience when you find that. Well, when you did watch porn, do you feel it helped you? Hell yeah, nah. Like in bed, performance wise. Hell no, nah. it didn't. Nah. So just so, what helped you performance wise? Um, doing it. Experience. Experience. So I, you never took anything from an actual porno and like and used did it in, in person. Bed. Nah, right. I I never been that type. I always been the type that, at both of us here now, I feel like my significant other will be the one that tell me what am I doing right or doing wrong because I feel like every girl is different. So that stuff in porn that you watching. It ain't it. So I I use her as the example. So whatever blase blase she messing with, then that's the way we're gonna go. But I never took nothing back from them. Like, oh, did you communicate this. with that before y'all would have sex? Like, would you would y'all communicate like as far as what y'all both we, liked from the other person? Oh hell nah. I just go in there, be just straight into yeah, it, and then surely. from there she would you know be for like surely. less this more that God help and, God and go that. through that. But I ain't gonna lie, I'm all I kind of I kind of like you feel me. You you know yeah yeah I kind of know what I'm doing somehow I don't know how I think I just got blessed with it so I'm kind of knowing what I'm doing. I in think some that can way. get passed down from the dad. I, my mom told my mom told me my pops was a freak boy and man my pops got twelve kids. Oh goddamn, a lot of us. Oh so then yeah you naturally that's something a, them passed down. Yeah that's like a, that's <laughs> that's like a dog know how to walk when you it come feel out. me so so yeah, yeah, yeah. some them being passed down so yeah I felt like I was that way I never I never try to copy none or precipitate if I said that word right. So else. I Thanks just so. always um try my own thing to see what'll work and what I would like the feeling of. Hey man, that's what's up. When I, I was doing it, y'all, when I was doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I'm not it's, doing it's, it no more. It's born again. It's born again to say. Um I ain't gonna lie. Uh, what I don't know, maybe I don't know. Some I think I took some stuff. Talking. <laughs> oh, you the talking? <laughs> talking. Well, I've i I've always, I, I like talking during, but like just like not even words, just the type shit to say. Why? Is is one like pause? Is one dude in particular? This motherfucker had would have me dying, bro. <laughs> I would pick up some of that shit. I ain't gonna lie. But, Yo, talking is wow. Do you I'm, talk during? Are you a talker? I had to be. Were calm. you a talker? We have to pass. Yo, yo, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. That's probably one of the hardest things to overcome. Exactly, right? It's talking. Yeah, but once you once the first couple times you do it, then it's it's it, it, it get going. You yeah, feel it's, it's comfortable. But because you because you think of what to say, right? Yeah. Nah, it comes to a point where you don't think. Yeah, you just, you, you just start going at yeah, it like you just yeah, okay, boom. Yeah. You start knowing the feeling, and that's how yeah. I was. I start knowing the feeling, but at first, it just be quiet. But that was also the type of pe- um, females I was messing with. It was, it was like, quiet for me. I think it was quiet for everybody at first. Yeah, it, it especially was, the first first time. Nah, for surely. That shit was for awful surely. for me. How was your first time? Um, it was weird. Yeah, nah, it was, I won't, it was terrible. Wait, was for it me. weird? It was weird because where I was at at the time, and I would not display that or where I was at because I know certain people gonna at a watch park? this. I was not at a park. Okay. I was in, I was in a room and all that, but okay. I was just in the wrong. Person's okay. room you, at that you, time, got you, got you, got you. <laughs> and I don't want them to watch this. <laughs> understandable, understandable. Like you said, the first time is usually a little weird. Let's take it to the grave with that yeah, one. Yeah, but hey, yeah, hey, but hey, yeah. Hey, so hey, hey. yeah, I wasn't talking too much. It was just like I think around the first time. That's the time you just probably had. Well, for me personally, I had SpongeBob on the background playing, like just turn that's, SpongeBob hey, up. Yeah, that's not bad. So I won't have to talk. Just yeah. just hit a TV, and yeah. that's how it was for me. So yeah. it was it was very weird that I look back at it now, but. Mm-hmm. I guess it worked for me at that time. Yeah, no, nah, SpongeBob. Something in the background is good. Did you like music playing? Like, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I like I like music playing. It it will give you like a flow to go by. Mm-hmm. If you use it as that, it will give you a flow to go by. Yeah, so. I like music. Did you ever have a playlist? 
No, nah, I never had a playlist. I'm a playlister. You, for real? Yeah, I'm a playlist. So you have a whole playlist I, set? I have a whole playlist. Oh, yeah. my I'm a, I'm a playlist. Yeah. I yeah. never had a playlist set. Yeah. I never had a playlist. I feel like... I recommend after, it. It's good. But here's the thing. If you make a playlist, here's uh-huh. just a tip for any of my fellas tuning yeah. in. If you make a playlist, run it by a woman after you make it. Because that will help a lot. Because oh. I, I, when I first, first made my playlist, uh-huh. I'm thinking it's hot shit. I'm using it, yeah. and something came on, and like it threw her off. She was like, "Why the what the fuck is this? Why do you have this playing?" So like, get a woman to like go Approve through it, it, and then she'll even add some shit okay. that you wouldn't even think of, and be like, "Okay." She be like, "Nah, believe me, believe me." Yeah, add this, smooth. and she'll be like, "All right, bet I'm gonna go." Ahead and hey, do it. I'm not gonna lie. If music started, it would probably be pre music, like pre game. So before anything even started, I'd be just cooling back and having music chilling. playing. Okay, yeah, the chilling, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the music was usually. Right. Yeah. I never had like I clicked on it like during yeah yeah. Put on some mm-hmm. um um, what's one of the old people back then that be making a type of music? What R Kelly? R Kelly or something like that. I never like let me tick this on and then get to it like yeah that's why you make a playlist unless it's a, unless it's an album that's decent listen hey listen I once probably you, gotta try that once you find wifey <laughs> I'm gonna have a playlist for her <laughs> once you find wifey get a playlist together just, just try it out but straight like, young boy on there see nah, just, <laughs> see, <laughs> see. yo I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the nowadays generation yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> straight yeah. young boy okay so then you trying to have 12 kids too then if you put on some young boy right away that's crazy work go crazy that's what I'm trying to say so nah I'm gonna have to find me a playlist. That's crazy. You, you pinning me on game yeah, right now. Yeah, make one. I'm, I'm telling you, make one and you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna just, just name it, it Future Wifey. Yeah, but not everyone gets the playlist. Let me make mm-hmm. that clear. Not everyone gets the playlist. Oh, so it's select a few. So not everyone gets the according playlist. to you, who gets the playlist? Like what vibes you think? If I'm trying to have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Sometimes, I mean, I try not to do this anymore, but sometimes it'd be straight business. Yeah, for but sure. But I prefer fun. Business too. Business is I'm a businessman, so it's always so, gonna be business. So, so how you how you get fun? Like where do you meet that people that you have fun with? Is it like you just meet them at the club and you like, oh nah. I'm trying to have or is there a particular woman that you like, yeah, I'm trying to Clubs have fun aren't with her. I mean, so when I say fun, here okay, because fun may sound like something out of the club. Yeah, for sure. I think it I'm kinda getting the too confused. When I say fun, I mean do anything with. Okay. I'm not doing any and everything with something I made out the nah, club. Nah, for sure. Like, I'm not giving head to nothing I made out nah, the club sure, or nothing man. like that. So when I say fun, I mean, we can do any and anything. everything. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, but when it comes to getting there, mm-hmm. that just, where we meet doesn't really matter. Not nah, for sure. A club, not really. But, like, where we meet doesn't matter, but it's just the bond. So now, it's, it's basically, like, the time that you didn't... Yeah, the connection. Yeah, okay. I like, I like where I'm at now. I like some type of connection. Nah, for sure. She ain't gonna be my girlfriend, but I like some, some type, type of, of connection. connection. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then to the point where we respect each other enough to exactly. where we could do a lot of stuff towards okay. and with one another. Okay. Like I don't want like something that I like. I'm just bent her over and we nah, done. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. Whack now. Yeah, I'm trying it's to turn whack. up. Like I'm, I want to have a. I want to have fun. So nah, that's what I mean yeah, when I say sure. fun. For so sure. the fun ones. Get the playlist. Okay, do the do the. Cause we there for a good time. Is the fun ones that that's the ones you you go get the honey pack from the um gas station or something. Yes. Well, let me. Well, <laughs> it is. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, Jay. That is that. that yeah, because that's that, the fun ones. It's ingredients. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just like when you have a party. You yeah. need you need cards. For you sure. need Music. You need uh-huh. pizza, wings. Mm-hmm. Those are the ingredients for okay. a fun night. Okay, I see what you're saying. But I'm gonna tell you. You want to know what my honey pack is? What is that? Honey. Oh, Henny? Give me like seven shots. That's my lucky number. Seven shots of Henny. Do you mix the honey inside? I see nah, I don't, I don't do honey. honey. Of, my um, man's does that shit. My man's mixes <coughs> his honey with Henny and Patron, all types of that, shit. He's a wild boy. But that's a death case right there. His nickname is Raw Dog. Shout out to Raw Dog. Raw Dog? He's in the DR right now going I hope he ain't wild. going Raw Dog. Neither, but dang, well, buddy. He has a kid, but he is in the, <laughs> D, he's in the DR. He just sent me a video on IG. He's on the DR going wild. And he FaceTimed me earlier, but I was I was busy. But shout out to my boy Raw Dog. <laughs> but yeah, Henny, Henny is my honey pack. Okay, so you yeah. so once you get you a couple shots, you more inside the mood with it. Some sort of Playlist, same. Hennessy. And I don't know something else. And something else, maybe you know, like some some paraphernalia. Do are you are you one of them guys that's more in the type of um, it's foreplay, ain't it? When when Shorty will put on like lingerie or type stuff like that. Well, first off, let me say that I'm loving this interview. Really becomes the interviewer moment right mm-hmm. now because not too many people are brave enough to jump into that not water. Sure. But you're doing your thing. You should start for a sure. podcast one day. <laughs> um, but to answer your question, you said, "Am I like when it comes to foreplay? Am yeah. I with lingerie like, and whatnot? Yeah, are you that type of like?" Like yeah, you gonna, you I, I, gonna, I love playing the Mr. Incredible. You gonna have the whole suit coming oh, inside there, type. You see what I'm saying? I, nah, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> where I'm dressing up, but if she and even like her dressing.
dressing up. I haven't fully done that, but the lingerie, like yeah. enti- the enticing part, yeah. I love that you shit. You like that? Okay. Yeah, okay. like like I like I like from both sides mm-hmm. building that shit up before penetration nah, even for happens. Sure. For you sure. know what I'm saying? As so you you, in, you into them handcuffs? Like you you handcuffed? Yeah. Okay. Would you yeah. ever get handcuffed? Uh, I, I gotta really fuck with her. <laughs> well, that's I, probably I gotta, one of my scariest moments ever. And it's crazy because I asked a girl about her getting handcuffed, and her response was, "Well, I gotta really trust him because if Not he sure. robbed my house, <laughs> so I don't. I've never been handcuffed. I've done a lot, not a lot, but I've done some handcuffing. But okay, I've never been handcuffed. I don't know. That would take that. I gotta really trust Boy, and fuck with Shorty to do yeah, that. That's I'm, that's a lot. But to, but to answer your question, all that shit before, yeah, chip ice, that. Okay. all types of oh, shit. Oh, chip yeah, ice yeah. and all that. Chip, <laughs> Has to be chip. Whole what, cubes what, won't do it. What, what, what about the candle wax? You don't like the candle wax and just... dropping on me like on Don't Be a Menace. <laughs> yeah, Don't Be a Menace. Hell no. Nah. Listen, I ain't with that pain shit. That's a little too kinky. Yo, I nah, seen that before. I'm like, kinky. bro, how did? Nah, but look, that's won't... probably the type of stuff you need to do while we're gonna bring the music back to the old school because that's what it was doing back in the day, wasn't what, it? What the that? candle? I don't. Yeah. Were they? Or the, or the government cheese? They had the yeah, that big ass brick cheese. of government cheese and lining uh, on fire. I, I don't, I don't know what they was doing. <laughs> I don't want to ask my people. That's a little weird. Nah, I, for I, sure. I, I don't know. I don't know what they was doing. I had to talk to my pops. Oh, yeah, nah, yeah. That, it's gonna be a little weird. Yeah, like, tw- it's twelve of us. Yeah, twelve kids. You would know. Cause what you was doing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What was y'all hobby? Yeah, let's <laughs> at them. All yeah. right. Um, but speaking of music, mm-hmm. uh, and then I think we even mentioned R. Kelly earlier. Mm-hmm. I got a question for you. You being someone who makes Music for women. Yeah. Would you classify it as R and B, or is it in a lane of its own that has just a hint of R and B? I was yeah, it does have like a hint of R and B. I say it's like um, hip hop and B. Okay. Hip hop and B. If I can make it my own little thing, because it's yeah. like melodic, and then it has like a R and B flow, because mm-hmm. I do sing a little on it, but then it also put it back in the hip hop just by the way the beat is. It's not more. Like low tempo is is more of a higher tempo, high pace sometimes. Sometimes I'll slow it down, but it's not like too much R and B. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So I feel like it's a mixture of, of both of them, melodic. All right. And we know as far as the inspiration, as far as the lyrics and whatnot, where that came yeah. from, you said toxic situations you was yeah. once a part of, you're just expressing it. What about <laughs> excuse me, what about musical inspirations of um, what, people? Yeah. Dang, I have a I have a lot. So growing up, I'm not gonna lie, growing up, my dad used to listen to a lot of fifty cent. He used to listen to a lot of people. 50 Cent was one of like the main ones. He used to get us all the 50 Cent video games and everything. My mom used to listen that to- That 50 Cent video game was tough. What? Yeah. Well, when them games come out, yeah, bro, my pops made sure he went to that store and grabbed us every single one, made yeah. it coming in. Yeah, my mom tough. used to listen to a lot of Sean Paul. Mm. I ain't really get with that. I ain't really get too much with the Sean Paul. But I used to like the voices well, and stuff he Sean was using. Paul- and what was that? Like, oh, three? Yeah, no, something like that. It was a minute ago. Six? Was like the top. It like, was a minute yeah, ago. Yeah, he had man. bangers left and right. My mom used to listen to that. I think I started getting with it because she used to cook while listening to that. And you know that food finna be ready. Yeah. So I let my dudes do. And then you just sit in there because you used to hear her play it while she cooking. And then you just hearing it enough that you like. You know what time it is. I oh, kind of like this music. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I'll say I used to grow up listening to Michael Jackson, one of the big ones, Chris Brown. Those were the people like we used to stay in the living room all night, like rewinding the dance moves back, trying to learn how to moonwalk and do all the little yeah. um, dance okay. moves they was doing. And then Temptations, we used to watch all them type of movies. Jackson Five, um, yeah, that was basically it. As far as the old school, coming up to the new school, right. I say um, Young Thug. That's definitely like one of my favorite artists. Free Thug, right now. One of my top favorite artists in the game. I just like how he did his own thing, Young mm-hmm. Thug, and yeah, it's some it's some more people too, but that's like my top. Um, so I I like that list because you went old school and new school. And, new school, and for sure. since you went old school and new school, mm-hmm. and you listed Temptations, Michael Jackson, Chris Brown, I got yeah. a question for you. What's that? Who's the king of R and B today uh-huh. and of all time? Mm. But you won't pit Michael Jackson to R and B, right? Because he was pop. Yeah, I, I see more pop. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, more I don't. Pop. I don't think. But I think Michael Jackson. First thing I don't think is R and B. Like so, you said, I think so. Pop. So you would say I say Chris Brown. Chris Brown and R and B. Yeah. So oh, to this day, to this day, according to me, I say Chris Brown because he's just the person I listen to the most. Some people might pick 
The Weeknd or Jacquees or one of them, but that's because that's who they precipitated more to. I was more like in towards um, Chris Brown, so I'll say, yeah, I would say Chris Brown for me. If somebody else say Usher and stuff, that's probably because you grew up off of Usher or you listen to him more. I didn't do that. I listened to Chris Brown more, so Makes according sense. to me, yeah, it would definitely be Breezy. For sure. All right. And then of all time? Or was he for both? Yeah, I think he would be for both. Okay. For both, for sure. All right, for cool, both. cool, cool. For my all time, right now, yeah. right now. Yeah. It might Bre- change later Breezy on in got life. got the title. Well, let me ask you this, because I, I actually saw this on Twitter. Since we're speaking to Chris Brown and you mentioned Michael Jackson, someone said Chris Brown could have been as big as Michael Jackson if not for the distractions. Do you agree with that? Um, nah. You said no? Mm-mm. Why not? I don't know. Um, Michael Jackson had distractions too. But I feel like, dang, the music Michael Jackson was putting out is so timeless. Like, he was way back then, but, but I Michael, remember. Also, Michael Jackson didn't indulge in the distractions as much as Chris Brown did, at least not nah, at, nah, at, younger, he, he young, did. at such as like a young age. Like, drugs and stuff? Nah, but it was just like different things he was going through at being a young age. It probably just wasn't too much on the media as Chris Brown's mm-hmm. type of stuff was. But I feel like he went through a lot of distractions. And then being young inside that type of game, like I know that was a lot of distractions from then. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Billie Jean tried to get him caught up. Nah, for sure. But I would say as far as the music, Michael Jackson had timeless music. Like Literally. I knew when I was a kid, I was listening to it. Then I see my nephews, like it's just something about him. Like people just draw, drawing too. But his, his music is like, it speak for itself. It's it definitely. does. That it does. That it does. Um, real quick, I want to give my answer for King of R&B of today and all time. Yeah, who you think? So today, shit, I don't know. Um, I want to say The Weeknd only because of the Trilogy album. That's like one the of weekend. my favorite albums of all time, the Trilogy album. Mm-hmm. But since the Trilogy, I mean, in a, in a little stuff after the Trilogy, but like as of recently, I can't really give that to him. Yeah. Um, Usher has still been... Consistently killing it, so I might have to give it to Usher. You can give it to Usher. Yeah, and he's like, you know, the verses. Usher, of, of, Usher, of Chris nice Brown. too. You can't take that from him. Yeah, I'll, I'll give because he's still, you know, like he's still, still torn going. and killing it and whatnot. He's still, he's still very relevant. Okay, so I'll give it to Usher as far as today, as far as all time. I'm gonna give that to Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, because. Damn. R and B stands for rhythm and blues, right? Yeah, and I think Marvin Gaye was the epitome of rhythm and blues because he really did have like his music was had a lot of blues because mm-hmm. he would rap about shit that like really made you, uh, um, I don't know. He just represented the black community, not for sure, positively, but he would bring light the negative shit that would not be happening sure. in the black community. Marvin Gaye has some good music too. Great music, great music, and he could sing. And he could sing. Sing, for sure. Yeah, like sexual healing, like on the <laughs> mountain, like Marvin could oh, sing. Oh, that's one of the ones you put on that playlist we were just talking yeah. about, is it not? Well, I, see, the thing. here's the thing with the playlist. <laughs> I, I was scared to put like old, old ass music on there because I didn't that's know how she would though. take it. Yeah, it's smooth, <laughs> but I don't, you know what I'm saying? She's like, what the fuck? Look, look, after this interview, go ahead and just add that at the, probably in the middle of the list. So sexual things, healing? Yeah. And see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to do it in the middle. Yeah, yeah. It might be smooth. I like that. Yeah. But um, I think he's the greatest of all time. A lot of people say Kinky Kells. I think Kinky R. Kells. Kelly is second. Oh, no. R. Kelly. I forgot about R. Kelly. Yeah. Kinky Kells. That's what I was talking about. You should hear R. Kelly at every graduation you was at. Cookout. All Cookout. that shit. R. Kelly was a fool. Yeah. Wait, are you talking figuratively or literally? Are you talking about his music was good or yeah, you saying his, he was a fool? Nah, like, his music. Okay, his yeah. music was a fool. That was the other person that, like, that man he could tell stories. He didn't even know stories. how to write music. That man could tell stories in his music. I believe I could fly. Man, had me right. at a young age believing I could fly. I tried to hop off the um, washing Come machine, on, bust my head open, though, but it just... Where he made me believe that yeah. I can fly. Yeah. I said, Mom, look, I can fly. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people have him as number one, and I get it. Like I said, I would put him at number two, uh-huh. and I probably put like Luther at number three. But mm. I think Marvin is the king of R and B as of now of all time. Dang, your lineup, your lineup is valid too. Your line, you got a you got a um all star lineup right there. Appreciate that, man. Music is my my. Now you got an all star lineup. That, your type of lineup right there is making me think back to the times that I just wasn't thinking about when I was mentioning mine. Yeah. It's like okay, that lineup. Well, is. you know if you. If you think of anything else, you can run it back. But Chris Brown is a very valid answer, so we're not mad at that. Um, all right, cool. So before we get out of here, I have uh, something called random question of the day, uh-huh. which is exactly a random what question. It sounds like it's just going to be the it. most random question of the day. 
Now, I wrote this question before this podcast interview started, <laughs> so it may not be as random, All right, let's and you'll see it. why. So my random question of the day, the pettiest thing a woman has done with or towards you, and when I say with or towards you, I mean either it was towards you, something petty she did towards, towards you, me. or something she did petty with you in the presence to towards witness it firsthand yeah. towards mm. someone else. Mm. Let me see. I won't. I won't necessarily say she did nothing petty when I was in there, cause I don't. I don't like that. So if she tried to do something petty and now right there, shut you might so well um, take. I'm finna go. You feel me? You handle your little business. I mm-hmm. I hit you back after it's done. But I say towards me. Damn. I don't even know something petty. Something like slashing your tires or something like that. You would call that petty? Yeah, absolutely. How many tires did, was slashed? Dang. A whole bunch. I'm, I remember my shorty sliced it's all of my bunch. tires. <laughs> she done sliced all my tires. I didn't got new ones on there. Then the next day, sliced them again. Oof. So it got to the point that I was thinking about, I was like, damn, I don't have to put a restraining order on her. Because like, damn. Was this your ex? Yeah. <laughs> Nasty work. That's them Tauruses right there. I don't know. People don't believe in science and stuff like that. But Remember the last episode I said, I'm a Sagittarius. <clears throat> Taurus are the most least compatible sign for us which y'all but i have attracted so many tourist women Me it's too. crazy and they say it's the most toxic and i 100 percent agree i only yeah. had one tourist woman that i dealt with oh, and she man. was chill she was chill. at least i never saw that side of her. but she was a uh, how old was she she was older than me. Okay, that's probably why. And I always tried to bring it out of her. I'm like, you're a Taurus. I know that side is in you. I used to antagonize yeah, sure. and try to bring it out just for so sure. I could get it out the way. It never <laughs> came out. So so let me ask you a question though. Do you believe do you believe in that type of um stuff? Somewhat. To an extent. How, how you say I don't I don't again, live my I, life. Astro- astrology, 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 astrology chart, all that shit. Stuff? To an extent. I think some characteristics are true, nah, but I'm sure. not the type like just because I'm saying this. I won't meet a tourist that I connect with and be yeah. like, nah, I'm sorry, I you're a tourist. You. Nah, yeah, I, I would sure. never do that. Like, okay. I do think some shit is true. Like, nah, for sure. Have you ever dated the same sign as you? Nah, I never did. Yeah. I never dated the same sign as me. I don't know why, but I feel like I always attracted tourists too. That's a lot of tourist women. They didn't, they didn't pop up out of nowhere. I'm like, man, where y'all coming from? So that's when that's I started getting into women. it. But then, back then, when I was trying to understand females and stuff like that, I was like, what do they like? Man, I seen a whole lot of females was liking the, how you say that again? Astrology. Astrology joint. They was loving that. So I started trying to learn different things about oh, it. Oh, bro, just so it's I can, deep. It's like a moon or sun or rising. Right? You can have like three different signs now. It was fucking crazy. It's crazy. I'm like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't get deep in the But now, nowadays, that's how you um communicate with a female now. You just walk up. What's your sign? You tell a little bit about her sign. She felt like she knew you the whole year. Ah, that's that's game for somebody out here. Just learn that person's sign. Talk to them about that sign. I swear she gonna love you. Lay out some shit. Lay out some 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 facts about her sign. You lay out some facts. It? She gonna start feeling like, hold on, I think I know you. Yeah, yeah. Ah. simple from there. <laughs> Everything else simple from there. I'm trying to tell y'all. So that's a little game one on one. I fuck with it, man. <laughs> I fuck with it. Um, well, listen. Before we get out of here, I got one more final question for you. It was question number one. It was. Summer Vibe song. Oh, yeah. Summer Vibe. Dang, did I even come up with one? All right. Boom, 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 boom. Summer Vibe song. That Damn. is tough, though, now that I think of it. That is tough. Why? I'm drawing a blank. I'm yeah. I'm never going to lie. Nah, that is tough. We, we could use Summertime by Will Smith. I mean, is there literally a better Summer Vibe song than Summertime? Um, um. Oh, yeah. Boom. Today was a good day. My mm. Ice Cube. Thank you. That clicked on me. I needed yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I needed that. Today that, was a good day. That is a great one. That'll make you like, you gonna hop off the porch for yeah. sure. Early and just, I think that that summertime song, that's gonna be like the top. Yeah. No, that's a great one. That's one of a great the top one. ones. Right I, I like that. I like okay, that. Okay, we getting it in. All right. Um, well, listen, YBH. The JR way. Two Ys. Standing for Two. Young Blessed. Hustlers. Hustlers. Yes, sir. And you be him or you be her. You be her. JR, what you got coming up for us? Um, So I'm actually about to drop another tape. I just recently dropped a tape called JR. So that was mostly me expressing myself on that tape so people can kind of understand me as the person. But then I got a new tape about to drop soon. I would say like within the next month or so. It's called um, OK, I'm Done. So the JR part was like, me expressing myself of going through these past toxic relationships and then this next tape saying, okay, I'm done. It's like, 
Like I'm done with all the toxic stuff. So anything past this is gonna be my heal form. Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm heal outfit. I'm not toxic no more. I, I didn't live it, I didn't have that. And then that's what we got coming up. I also got a song called Foul Play about to drop pretty soon. They're gonna like that one. It's just about a shorty acting foul. She mm -hmm. did some foul stuff. She playing games. So that's dropping next too. So y'all stay tuned for that and yeah, that's what we got coming up. Looking forward to it, man. Send everything my way. Um, where can the people find you? That way they can be kept right, up so to date. Boom, you can catch me on everywhere. I mean, everywhere. You can search me up, YBHJR. You can catch me on Instagram at the real JR. And JR is spelled J A Y Y R. That is with two Y's. You got to add the two Y's, and then you're going to find me. You see what I'm saying? You can search me up on Google. You're going to find me everywhere. Just put YBHJR. All right, man. I like it. And, um, you know, I truly appreciate you for pulling up. I appreciate you for having me. For us making this happen. This was a great conversation. Yeah, you sure. know what I mean? I think uh, your audience is going to really appreciate, you know, this nice personal side sure. uh, behind the artist. Um, everyone tuning in, whether you're listening on your respective podcast platform or you're watching via YouTube, I truly thank y'all, first and foremost, from the bottom of my heart, because I couldn't do this without y'all. While y'all are here, though, make sure that you hit subscribe and like and share this out. But most importantly, subscribe. That way you can be kept up to date on every new episode. I'm your host, Day Day. This is YBHJR. And we are gone. Peace. Doses. <laughs>